Hi, I'm Dr. Siegfried, and thanks for coming to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm a chiropractic physician in practice since 1983, and today we're going to be talking about the head and the TMJ and its relation to head function. Uh, we're going to be talking about the head, which has, this is a human skull. This skull, the human skull has 22 movable bones. And when those bones are moving properly, properly, the TMJ is working the way it should. Uh, when the bones of the head, when they, I'm going I'm to use the big bones here. Here's this, this is a human skull. And I'm going to use the big bones of the skull to make the point that when these 22 movable bones are working the way they should, which is side to side, front to back in our example here, then the skull is moving the way, all the bones are moving the way it should be. And the TMJ joint, which is this joint right here, you can see this going up and down like this. That's working the way it should. When it's not working the way it should, you're subject to uh, facial pain, tooth pain. In fact, TMJ pain is second in pain uh, levels only to tooth pain so, or, and facial pain. So the TMJ problem is a real big problem for a large number of millions of people, millions. So um, the, th the, the TMJ joint, briefly here, is what we call a hinge joint. And it's supposed to move like this. And it's dependent upon the symmetry of this skull for its proper function. Now, uh, if you look at this skull, you may or may not be able to see that this skull is not uh, formed the way it should be. And the, way, the, the simplest way to tell that is that there's a deviated septum right here. That's called the septum. So this guy is not the way was must have had some trauma or something because this side of the face is narrower and it's pushing this way. Conversely, when you see the uh, the heads that are symmetrical and the teeth the way they're formed the way they should be, you can look at some of these professional athletes. They have beautiful heads, beautiful facial structures, and their their head is moving and working the way it should be. And because of that. Things like, for example, just the TMJ joint, the bite, etc., are working the way it should be. One of the big problems with the TMJ joint is that if it's not working right, if this hinge joint is not working the way it should, then what happens is, for example, when you bite, every time you bite, it affects the TMJ joint, it affects your bite, it affects all the bones of the head, it affects all the bone, the, the brain, all these nerve centers in the brain. So the point is, your bite should be what it should be what it should be normal and you bite down and you swallow, there's a tremendous amount of pressure that occurs right in here. And if that's off, then you can have a tremendous number of problems, pain, uh, inflammation, swelling, uh, all kinds of teeth problems, orthodontic problems, things like that. So the point is this TMJ joint is dependent upon the symmetry of the head, the normal functioning movement of these bones. And when it's not moving the way it should, then you got a problem. And how do we know this? Well, the base of the, the bones of the head pivot off of what we call the sphenoid bone, which is right here. It's called, it's called the sphenoid bone, looks like a butterfly or a bow tie. Now, when, for example, a birth trauma or a blow to the head or a punch in the face, something like that affects this TMJ joint, then this sphenoid bone, which is the base of the skull, also gets locked up. And when this is locked up, everything is out of kilter. And for example, the brain, which is sitting like that, it's these bones, when they're moving the way they should be, like this, it's pumping the brain. It's called the primary respiratory mechanism. Another example is the brain is pumping the way it should, just like this. And it's pumping, pumping nutrients uh, to every cell and tissue in your body. Now, for example, if this TMJ joint is not working the way it should be, then that's interfering with this pump to the brain. And of course, there's imbalance in the TMJ joint, there's imbalance in the teeth, there's imbalance in the bite. Pain, there's imbalance in the ear, the, the function of the ear, imbalance in the eyes, all kinds of things can occur. And that has to be reestablished because if, it, if, that, if these bones aren't working the way they should be, then the primary respiratory mechanism is not working the way it should be. The bones are locked up and it's basically, it's like you're driving around with the brakes on. Just put your brake on the car and see how far you get. You push and push and push and then that's when the symptomatic picture occurs. Now, from a medical standpoint, the way this is evaluated is x-ray, uh, motion x-ray a lot of times, x-rays this way, CAT scans, um, and that's the way they evaluate it primarily. Uh, also just the bite itself, you can do impressions. And if that's off, then 
there's that's a medical there's a dental approach to that and that is usually a bites bite um, uh, what do you call it a splints uh, you can have impressions you can have um, uh, splints sometimes they even do surgery or they can use medication of some kind but the problem is it doesn't change that this bone here this sphenoid bone is locked up and until this gets unlocked then you're just driving around the brakes on and instead of this thing working the way it should like this it could be like this and all I have to do all you have to do if you have a TMJ problem or a bite problem you know exactly what I'm talking about so this motion this this motion here has to be reestablished this motion of this sphenoid bone has to be reestablished this pumping this primary respiratory mechanism has to be reestablished and the way uh, it's done in an alternative fashion is what we call a bilateral nasal specific treatment and if you want to learn more about that, you can go to my website, uh, nasalspecifics.com. You can call me for a consultation because this is the other side of the story. Medically speaking or dentally speaking, when you have this problem treated dentally, uh, not that it doesn't help. It's just that there's a tremendous cost. There's a tremendous time frame. There's tremendous inconveniences. Like if you've got splints and, and braces and all of these things that are helped to, to balance this out, they may be helping but they don't get to the cause of the problem, which is the sphenoid bone and the malfunction of the sphenoid bone and the weakness of the ligaments in the TMJ joint, which allows things to, to move abnormally. So if this is of any interest in you, I'd be happy to talk to you. Again, you can go to my website and uh, be happy to visit with you sometime. Just give me a call or again, go to my website, email me, whatever you'd like. Thanks a lot for watching.